Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Middlebury High School, and this is a video on Table F solubility chart. Um, once again, this is a topic and solutions. We have a test coming up soon, and uh, this is a review for that topic. All right, um, Table F is very, very simple to use. Um, you simply have to first determine, okay, what your compound is. You'll be given the compound. So you look at the solubility from there, okay, from in, which, in a particular column. All right, you have a soluble column right here, and you have an insoluble column over here, okay? Now, the thing is, guys, you have to choose a particular ion in the compound that they give you. You don't look for the whole compounds in the particular columns. For example, if they give you um, potassium chloride or whatever, you don't look for potassium chloride. You look for either potassium or chloride. But we'll do some examples in a second. And very important, you must check if there are any exceptions, all right? Because if there's an exception, it will flip the original answer around. And we'll look at an example of that in a second. Um, just as a, an aside, in the olden times, the, um, the solubility chart looks something like this, and you would have all these different things to contend with. You'd have um, soluble, okay, um, slightly soluble, I'm looking at the top left corner, insoluble, decomposes, and uh, not formed. And sometimes, in some places, you'd have to actually memorize that chart. But um, our chart, table F, is really, really simple, so, uh, you know, that's good for us. Okay, now we have four um, compounds to our left. I want you guys to pause the video. I want you guys to determine whether it's soluble or insoluble, and we'll go from there. Okay, um, potassium nitrate. Now you can either check the K, all right, or you can check the NO3, the polyatomic ion, either one to get the answer. Now you can check K. K just so happens to be in group one, okay, and there's no exception, so. We see right away that this guy is soluble, and you're done. You move on, okay? Our next guy is aluminum hydroxide. So once again, you can look for aluminum, but you don't see it. It's no problem. You then go to the next guy, hydroxide. Hydroxide just so happens to be over there in the insoluble column, okay? And before you write insoluble down, you check your exceptions. Now we see the exceptions are group one, calcium, barium, strontium, and ammonium. It's, there's no exception in terms of aluminum, so we can safely say that aluminum hydroxide is insoluble. Okay, so this is a nice simple, um, two simple examples right there. All right, moving on. We have silver chloride, okay, silver chloride, okay, um, we're going to check for that. Um, we don't see any silvers in the columns. But we know from experience from Chem 1 that Cl is a halide. Okay, and we see our halides over here, chloride halides. Okay, one of the halides. And we can say, okay, it's soluble, right? But before we do that, we check for the exceptions. And it just so happens that Ag is an exception. So we cannot write soluble. We must write in soluble for silver chloride. Now, once again, we did not look for silver chloride on the chart. We look for either the Ag or the Cl, one of the ions, because once again, it says ions, right? So you check the particular ion, not the whole compound. All right, moving on to calcium sulfate in the bottom here, calcium sulfate. So we look for sulfates. Okay, we see sulfates are, let me see, sulfate, sulfate, good, right here in the bottom, okay, of the first column right here okay and sulfates are normally soluble right okay so before you write soluble down let's check our exceptions okay we see that whoops yes calcium is right here so calcium will turn this soluble normally sulfate into insoluble okay so you noticed we have one soluble guy and we have three insoluble guys okay so that's how you do that all right look for a particular ion you find it, you check for any exceptions, and you go from there. Now, when we know how to do this, this will help us with our next slide in terms of looking at double replacement reactions and whether they form precipitates. Okay, precipitates are simply um, solid formations from a clear solution. Okay. 
Now, we've been talking about double replacement reactions in class, and, um, you know, it went over pretty decently, but some people had a bit of confusion. So here we go. Once again, double replacement, like its name says, is basically switching. We have, for example, lead replacing AG, all right? And we have AG replacing lead. That's all it is, okay? Now, this side of the reaction, on this side, the left side of the arrow, is called your reactant side. And this side of the reaction is called your product side, okay? And you can be asked, are those products, are they insoluble or soluble, okay? If those products are insoluble, you will get a precipitate, okay? So once again, if your product side, if anything on your product side is insoluble, you will see a PPT, you will see a precipitate. All right, so we can check our lead nitrate. So we'll check lead nitrate right now. All right, so we're going to go to our, 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 our chart. All right, we look for nitrates. All right, and nitrates are in the middle of the chart in the first column, one, two, three down. And nitrates have no exception. So lead nitrate, okay, we can safely assume is soluble, right? So lead nitrate will not form a precipitate. Now we go to the chlorides, halide, right? Chloride, halide, okay. Um, chlorides are normally soluble, but AG is an exception. Okay, I'm looking at the second from the bottom in this uh, soluble column. So AgCl, okay, is insoluble. So based on the fact that AgCl is insoluble, it will form a precipitate in solution, an insoluble precipitate in solution. So that's what we were trying to talk about in class on Friday in terms of whether or not you will get a precipitate formed from a double replacement reaction. Okay, um, you can pause the video and you can do number three and you can do number five. Okay. Um, we're doing number three and number five, all right? We're looking at the products, aluminum sulfate, all right, and NaCl. Okay, so we're going to look at aluminum sulfate and NaCl. So we go to our chart again. We open it up. We look for sulfates in the bottom here. In the bottom, and um, we see that... Um, Sulfates are normally soluble, all right? Okay, so we check if aluminum is an exception. Okay, I'm looking at the very bottom of the soluble chart. I look on to, the, to the right of it. I see AG, CA, SR, BA, and lead. Okay, so aluminum is not an exception. So we can assume that aluminum sulfate is soluble, all right? And we check NaCl. Now, Na is sodium. Chlorine is a halide, so we check the halides, and it just so happens that if you're in group one, no matter what you are, okay, based on um, the very first uh, guy, in the first, um, the top of group one, uh, look this group one ions, you will always, always be soluble. So this will also be soluble. So you have two soluble products right here. Now there's a bit of a um, debate as to whether this reaction will take place even because both things are soluble or is it just going back and forth at equilibrium not, and not going to completion but that's not we're not going to worry about that we just know for a fact that we will get no precipitate from this reaction in number three because both things are soluble and we're going to move on to the last one okay which is going to be BASO4 and aluminum chloride, all right? Barium sulfate and aluminum chloride. So we look for sulfates. The sulfates, once again, are in the bottom, okay, of the soluble column. And normally it's going to be soluble, right? But if we go to the exceptions, we see that barium is an exception. So what's going to happen? Barium sulfate will be in soluble okay so barium sulfate insoluble barium sulfate will give you a precipitate okay and we'll check the last one aluminum chloride we check our chlorides all right chlorides are normally soluble aluminum is not an exception so we can assume safely that aluminum chloride is 
is soluble. Okay? Yes. All right. Okay. Now, what we did here today was a very brief um, overview of what we did on Friday in terms of solubility charts. Okay, remember, we have double replacement reactions. They're just switching partners, but you cannot forget to use the Chris cross method when you're writing your formulas. You switch the charges, okay, the numbers of the charges and not the actual um, negative or positive signs to get your formula. Now, these equations are not balanced, so we balance them later. We know to balance equations, but what we're going to focus on is whether the particular product, whether or not it's soluble or insoluble, and from that, we can determine whether or not we will see a precipitate. Okay, once again, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Um, I want you guys to do very, very well on the test, so please study, please study, and I hope this video was a help. Take care.